Hey gearheads and welcome to Garage Talk. I'm Corey. I'm Holly. Back there is Tucker. Yep, that's me. And we are riding in off-road luxury right now, though don't know that I can convince you to drive this one off-road. No. Maybe. Okay. Mm, I mean, we... let's see what the price is, but I'm going <laughs> to go with a no. We are in the 2023 Chevy Silverado ZR2 Bison, a partnership with AEV. And in this video, we're going to tell you what this off-road pickup truck is like for our family of three. Stay tuned. All right, Holly, I forced you into this pickup truck out of the Ford Bronco that we are also testing this week. Something tells me you didn't not have a good time <laughs> when I swapped you into this one because I'm seeing 90 degrees on the thermostat. We both have our ventilated front seats on, the air conditioning's going, it's all good in here right it's all good in the neighborhood it's cool that's for yes. sure so what are your thoughts first impressions on silverado zr2 bison it's big <laughs> it is very big <laughs> it uh, is very big but not hard to maneuver mm -hmm. and we were just talking about the 360 cameras yeah i'll go which... ahead and show we're we're going at speed here so you can't access some of the camera features while you're actually moving uh, most notably the rear camera for trailering but yes 360 cameras tons of different views i was able to use uh, the cameras to see my front wheels back wheels when off-roading a lot of fun stuff go mm -hmm. check out my off-road video sorry cut you off <laughs> had to go bragging about your off-roading i mean <laughs> I, I i think i've had more fun in this one off-road at Barnwell than any other vehicle I've taken out there so far. So okay, so there is that. Do I mean, is the I wouldn't think that this is like a recreational vehicle. Mm. Um, I would I feel like it's I, I've said this before about these kind of trucks that it feels like it's like the owner of a construction mm -hmm. company mm -hmm. that at one time had a truck that was a work truck, yeah. but and this is like, like the office work truck. Yeah. <laughs> so this is the currently the most expensive Silverado you can get. Uh, it was built in partnership with AEV, American Expedition Vehicles. So there are some aftermarket parts on this, steel bumpers, steel skid plates, cool looking wheels. I don't know about you, but I really like the black wheels on this one. Mm -hmm, I do. Um, but yes, uh, this this is this has got all but the do bells people and buy this to like just go off-roading i feel that a majority of the people buying this would be pulling a side-by-side -side on a trailer and oh, would want yeah, this yeah. to get to a semi off-road uh, destination to go even further with a smaller mm -hmm. more purpose-built vehicle mm -hmm. but that could just be me the tow rating on this is 8800 as spec so so it can do what a does decent, that mean how, how it could do it? a decent amount of towing but you do a give up some double wide no what do you call them <laughs> no. slide out <laughs> you, rv you could get a small uh camper behind this one i, I wouldn't go too big or like too crazy like how small I would say like those art pods that we've been looking at. So this big old truck. The thing you have to think about when pulling a camper is there's the weight of the camper and then all the stuff you bring in with it. And you don't want to max out your truck. This does have the trailering package, so you do get electronic tow brake and stuff like mm. that. But no, if you want to pull a legit camper, 1500 is not, is not the way to go. Okay. You want to go 25, 3500. Yes. All right then. So. Let's take her back. Thoughts on exterior styling. We'll start there. I really like all of the styling of this truck. Yeah. Um, I, it's a really nice truck. It's. It looks big and tough with those bumpers. It looks and, big and tough. And I've said this before and I'll say it again. If you're going to get a truck, get a truck. Yes. And this Maybe is a truck. truck. This is a truck. I like it. I like the colors that we have on it, which is gray. Yes. Black. So what do you think my feeling uh, is on the color of this one? Well, you wouldn't pick gray, probably. This is actually almost the exact same color as the Silverado I bought back in 2007. Oh, really? Yep. So I had a, a gray 
You don't uh, normally like gray or. Yeah, no that, that one kind of, it, it, it wore on me. The, Sarah gray, Jo. the grays that we like are like blue usually gray. bluer, yeah, bluer yeah. than this, but I like it. I like, but well, it's got the black accents mm -hmm. to it too, so that, yeah. I like that. And then we've Color got those uh, sliders, the rock sliders that are body mounted that mm -hmm. you can kind of use as a step. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't recommend it, but yeah. if you're yeah, short and have no other slick. option. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what are your thoughts coming inside interior styling? We did have the Trail Boss not that long ago. This just has a little more features than that Trail Boss did. I like the styling on the inside. Mm -hmm. um, there, I really like this gray that goes around the steering okay. wheel part. Um, I just think it's like, it's Subtle one of, it, yeah, it's one of those things that it's not in your face, but it's very nice. It makes it look expensive. Okay. Um, I've got to ask you about this texture. You yeah, like it? I do like it. It's on you the doors. Like no, I, I do. It's on the door. It's everywhere. It's doors, like dash, uh, seats. Simple. Uh, you're, you're always bringing up all the different textures and materials. This, this mm -hmm. has got it in spades. It does. And then you have the different color on the dashboard mm -hmm. with the lime or yellow. It's yellow. Stitching. Yeah. yeah. Which so, isn't, it's not tacky. Yeah. So I could probably go a few more of that yellow accents around, yeah, but yeah. it's on this too. Yeah. It's nice. And then we've got AEV in our headrests for, you know. What is an AEV? AEV is the company that helped build this. They made the bumpers, the skid plates, the wheels. It's American Expedition Vehicles. Oh. Yeah. That's why it's called the Bison. It's also their logo. Oh. So, yeah. You if you were wondering. Bose speakers. Yeah. It's got a, nice. a decent sound system for Tucker's Dinosaur songs. <laughs> so. Uh, I mean, if we're going to listen to the dinosaur yeah. songs, we need to hear that bass. Yep. And then we both have big handles for climbing up. We were talking about Yes, the... and they're also <laughs> at a good, uh, angle. a good angle up, so you can pull yourself up. Yeah. You've got two-person memory seat with an exit button over there, so that's okay. nice. Oh, it's an exit button. It helps, sco it'll scoot your seat back into a comfortable spot to get out of the vehicle. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Now, if I ever set my seat, that yeah. would be nice, too. And then tilt telescoping. I think I will. How do I do it? Set. And then two. Oh, let's talk about okay. the seats. Yes. OK. It gives you a little tickle on your booty. <laughs> the GM safety seat? Yes. And I'm not sure if it's jarring or nice. I can't decide. So that's seat... the first time it happens. If you're not expecting it, it's a little like, whoa. That is GM safety seat. And it uses all the sensors around the vehicle to know if you're departing your lane or if you're getting too close to a stationary object. And that you're backing up. Yeah. And it'll give you a little vibrate. And if say you're departing the lane on the left side, the left side of your booty will vibrate. Yes. Or if you're departing the right side, it'll vibrate just enough to, you know, startle you enough to be like, oh, what, what? Make sure you're paying attention. It's startling. Yeah. So while we're over there. It was certainly a surprise. <laughs> while we're over there talking about <laughs> driving and all that, thoughts on the steering wheel? I like the steering wheel. Yeah, I tilt, already said that. Tilt telescoping? Like, yes, and it's uh, automatic, not yep. manual, and I like that. Yep. Uh, and then That's just a little spoiled thing. Yes. And then going back a little to the seats, I, I mentioned earlier, we're also in a Ford Bronco. Uh, the seats were a little squishier in the Bronco mm -hmm. than these, these are firm. These are very firm. But there are also many options mm -hmm. for like lumbar support. Yep, They're yep. all automatic. Um, forward, backwards, a little tilt up, yep. a little tilt down. Very, so very customizable nice. and comfortable, very custom. but firm. Yeah. Definitely firm. This has the head up display. I like that. Yes. And Chevy is putting a massive head up display. I believe the official rating is 15 inch. Uh, head up display on that, which is larger than the screen, which is larger than the gauge cluster in mm. front of you. But I think that's just potential area for it to migrate to because you can raise and lower it based on your height. And uh, but yeah, very informative. I had it on the off road mode. I don't know if you've pushed any buttons over there to take it off of that, but it shows you pitch and roll and stuff like that, which yeah. is a nice segue. We are about to turn on to the historic brick streets of downtown Tyler, Texas where we can do Tucker's wobbly head test. 
see how this off-road purposed built truck does when the pavement gets a little less than ideal all right so turning on the brick streets tucker you ready mm -hmm. wobbly head let's see and we are on the brick streets what do you think oh okay he's gonna be a little shy today but i can say after just taking the bronco down this I feel there's more truck jitteriness to this, but the bumps are absorbed a little bit better in this. What say mm. you? Yeah, I think I would agree with that. And that that's kind of my thought about this as an on-road pickup truck. It has a little more truck jitteriness to it than I would say even that uh, trail boss that we had. But when, when you really need, it soaks up the bumps. Really yeah, good. yeah. So you're jiggly, but it's a smooth jiggly. <laughs> there you go. Yes. Uh, what are your thoughts on the powertrain of this one? We've got the 6.2 liter V8 under the hood. Oh. I guess. Yeah. Uh, no, it's it's one of the vehicles that it ex you're getting faster than it feels like you're getting yeah. faster. You got to keep an eye because it doesn't it doesn't take very much effort to get faster yeah. which is nice and you know sometimes when you have a big vehicle um it can feel like you're like oh chugging come along on, yeah. chugging along but not in this one it yeah. hasn't i haven't two things that surprised me because of how big it is is when i brake it doesn't feel like i'm stepping on the brake as hard as it can and it's still no. like no. slow to stop so good brakes good brakes and um, and then also, like I said, it accelerates more seamlessly yeah. than I. What felt would you like say about would. maneuverability for such a big truck? Um, so it is a big truck, but I feel like the turning radius is good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I haven't had any problems, and the times that I mean, because I do have to like see over the mm -hmm. hood, it's very big. Um, but I feel like the times that I've been like parking or backing up or something like that, the 360 cameras have made it so easy to make sure that I'm in the lines, make right. sure I'm not hitting anything. If I get too close to something, my butt jiggles, so it's <laughs> fine. <laughs> but I feel like as far as driving this, don't say oh, yeah. But. oh yeah, I meant booty, not, yeah. not booty. But, so I feel like all of those features together make it easier to drive than some other yeah. big but, vehicles that don't have those. Then we do have the rear view camera mirror, which you don't so much like, but it does help you see a little bit more out the yeah. back, especially with Tucker and his car seat back there. And guess, if we had stuff in the back. Yep, yeah, which I guess is now a good segue to installing Tucker's child safety seat back in the back. All right, gearheads, one of my favorite things about full-size trucks is just how much room there is in this back seat. Now, I will say there are lower tethers, uh, lower anchor points on both outboard seats here, but nothing in the middle seat. So if you want to use the middle seat, you're going to have to borrow outboard tethers on either side of the center seat. And the same principles apply uh, for hooking it up up here. There are anchor points for the middle seat as well, but we're gonna show you exactly what it's like to uh, put the child seat here on the passenger side. Like I said, same principles apply for either the middle or the uh, driver's side, but we've got C Tucker's forward-facing Graco car seat that we will bring in here. Again, just so much room all the way around uh, for getting this in. I did just have this in my 2013 Chevy Cruze, so I'm gonna extend this out just a little bit, and then I'm gonna pull it a little bit closer. We have this nylon strap over the outboard shoulder of the rear seat, and I am gonna feed this top tether through that nylon strap, and we're gonna go around the back seat headrest and we're gonna wait until the end to secure that in the, into place. Otherwise, the lower latch points are very well marked and easy to get to and see because there is a little cutout 
in the seat material around them that gives you enough visibility into where they are in the vehicle and allows you to tighten down or get to them really easily to <coughs> tighten down. And for me at 510, this really is a good height for securing the seat into place and makes for a very easy installation. And then again, all the room in here. Now for that top tether. So we fed it all the way through. We pulled it tight from the back of the seat and behind this center headrest here, there is a metal attachment point where you can attach it and pull it nice and tight and get that securely snug all the way across. And that is how you install a child safety seat in the back seat of a Silverado. Again, center seat, very similar. And I didn't even call to attention, this is a 60-40 split bitch seat, uh, seat bottom. So you can flip and fold them up. And one of the reasons why I really like it here in the Silverado, this is the 40%. So I can still access my under seat storage with Tucker's single child seat in place here. Not all pickup trucks have a split seat bottom like this. And I have a sneaking suspicion one of them will be back on the channel very soon. Overall, I give the Silverado an A plus for ease of installation, especially for pickup trucks. All right, what are your thoughts on storage in here, Holly? We've got yeah, a big, big center console with a removable tray. I yeah, mean, I like the tray. Tucker could probably hide in there. Uh -huh. We've got a, a fairly yep. good sized glove box here. We've a got a secondary glove box. Yes, that opens very yeah. aggressively. You got some little thing right here yep. that I guess you could put pins or mm -hmm. change or whatever. Pins right here, cup holders here. Cup holders. Just stuff. Lots, lots of storage storage pockets yeah i've storage got one pockets. on the side of the center console over here so holly it, it has long been said that gm interiors are cheap at least by all the commenters on some of our previous video videos and some major publications have often said that there are sharp edges in gm interiors that are trying to cut you what do you say to the overall build quality inside here is this an interior you'd want to spend some time? Yeah, this is a, not an interior that I would think is cheap. Yeah. So there are, I mean, like some hard surfaces down here. So it's not all like leather, yeah, leather sure. top surfaces. But I feel like if this was a work truck or you take it off road, that's like the places that you would want kind of that harder. Mm. harder. Um, but there's so much of a mix of material in here and some small details like this gray. Yeah area right here you really like i it. really like it I, th I feel like it's a detail if we're talking about it yeah. a detail that makes it feel more um like a luxury vehicle okay um fair point not you know not just a regular old steering wheel yeah now the seats could be a little bit more comfortable yes um and by a little, I mean a lot more comfortable. <laughs> but Okay, so to that end, we talked about them being firm, but you drove it back from your parents' house. I did. Was that, it an uncomfortable true. drive? You know, no, it wasn't an uncomfortable drive. No, and that's about 45 minutes away. Yeah. So, um, no, I've definitely ridden in some cars that my back was hurting before I got home. Yeah. That is not this vehicle yeah. at all. It, it, it's it, just for, it's on the firmer side, yeah. which some people, for me, I would like it a little less firm, yeah. but I could still drive it a long distances, so. Well, that brings us to, if you have nothing else, I don't the window so. sticker. So, got a whole big stack of them in here. Hold we're, on, uh, Daddy, we're <laughs> testing it out. All right. That did pretty good, huh? Yeah. So, got a big old stack Couldn't of them in here. Couldn't have done that in the Bronco. No, we could not. Uh, this We are one of the first to, to test this one. Um, it is the 2023 Silverado 1500 ZR2 AEV Bison. I will go ahead and throw this out there. MPG, 14 city, 17 highway, 15 combined, and 400 plus miles of driving this, including my off-road testing, which we left it running a lot because it was hot out there, 14.7. So I'd say it's getting just a little bit better than this window sticker, given that, again, I left it running while we were off-roading, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. slow-moving off-roading stuff takes a lot of fuel. But what would you say 
the window sticker. I already gave it away. This is the most expensive Silverado you can currently buy in the 1500 realm. What did you say? Price on this one. Having zero reference. Reference. 70? Mm. Uh, 75? Mm. Mm, 80? Mm. It's higher than 80. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, as this one is I mean, specced, I guess it does have the ventilated and heated seat. So, you can get a ZR2 without the Bison package. ZR2s start at 71,500. Okay. When you add the AEV package, which has the front steel bumpers, the skid plates, the wheels, tires, um, the uh, headrests, the floor mats, all that good stuff. Everything you like. That's about $8,000 right there, just in those packages, bringing the total price to $84,905. And Woo! I can tell by that reaction right there that I can keep on dreaming. You can keep on dreaming, <laughs> buddy. About having a ZR2 Bison in our driveway long term. Well, you can have one in your driveway until Tuesday. Until, <laughs> until they come and pick it up from us? Yeah. Well, on that bombshell, probably less surprising after you know the price. Uh, if you want to know from more from Holly, see more from her behind the scenes, find her Facebook, Instagram, at Female Consumer. You can find all things GT Garage Talk on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, YouTube, at GT Garage Talk. Or you can go to gtgaragetalk.com where you can read more about this and all, many other vehicles that we've tested and driven here on the channel. I think I got it all out there. Um, but as for us in the Silverado ZR2 Bison, I'm not ready for it to go. Until next time. Bye. Recording, recording. Everybody ready? Jack, I like this. I have a Chevy truck, I mean a shirt, and a Ford shirt, and they are both dirty.